Fenn did hang on for fourth, but it was Steve Cummings that led the group over for fifth position. There's the rest of the places confirmed for you. Mark Cavendish, good climb at Gun Hill for him. He completed it in eighth spot. Now, this is the group that they left. Now, they really have got to get settled down pretty quickly if they want to try and bridge to that group. With a gap to this uh, chasing bunch, it's only within a minute at the moment, so it could all come back. These three riders, they're looking around, talking to each other, and I don't know if they're saying to each other, well, we'll wait for the chasing group just behind. Well, I can tell you, Brian, the consistent climbing today, so far, from Russell Hampton, has given him enough points to hang on to that Skoda King of the Mountains overall lead. I think that's what he was looking out to, to do, Hugh, today, but uh, again, at the front of the bunch, Rabobank now put tanking on the front. They like this breakaway, they want to push it ahead, because this bunch behind are still within breathing distance. Well, there's one more sprint to go, and that, of course, is in leap. As you can see, that gap, well, it's not convincing, is it? Those three are now almost back in the group. Well, you can see some of the cars coming past now. The gap is getting very, very small. Jaunty and the lock swings over at the front, but again, it's this chasing group of 24 still pushing hard at the front. So, they have, I think, surrendered. Yes, here they go. The junction is made, and the three have now been absorbed by the chasing group. So 27 riders now have assembled on the run to the finish in Hanley. The next uh, sprint for them is going to be for the Yodel Sprint, the third one of the day in Leek. Yeah, well, Leek is coming up soon. Steve Cummings just at the front for Team Sky, just behind him. Bram Tankink and uh, Michael Matthews, the under-23 champion of the world for Rabobank. He's a big sprinter, is Matthews, so Cavendish will be aware of that. And this is the peloton. They're within a minute of that front group, and the world champion, Tour Bushov, is in the middle of the mix. Well, in this front group of uh, 27 Team Sky, still put riders on the front because they don't want the world champion and the rest of the peloton to come back to the front. Now, Sky, in this kind of position, surely they can start firing riders down the road and probably leave Ben Swift, their big sprinter, in the wheels so he's got fresh legs. It's a possibility, Hugh, but uh, they've got six riders in the front group. They've got this group of the peloton with Hushov in it, still within a minute, so they want to try and push out that advantage to two, three minutes, and then they can start attacking. And there they are, lined out in perfect linear formation, just like a team time trial. Three riders from the Sky Squad turning the screw and keeping the power high. Well, they're using up at the front, Ben Swift. Steve Cummings and Matt Heyman are the first three from Team Sky. Got to remember as well, Hugh, this sprint points has got three, two and one seconds, so they could count for the overall. And they're getting close then to the final sprint of the day in Lee. And uh, as you said, there are time bonuses available, which could be pretty critical when we add the situation up at the end. But let's not forget there's ten for the winner and six for second and four for third at the completion of the stage. Well, we know that uh, Yodel Sprint Green Jersey leader at the moment is in the second group of the peloton but uh, just look here team sky are trying to think of these three two and one seconds that's Garen thomas Garen thomas has gone past steve cummings so Garen thomas a man who won an olympic gold medal in beijing as a member of the team pursuit he's using his great speed and power here to try and scoop up his first points of the competition and that's actually caused a little break three riders have gone away and it's thomas now forging his way to the line here comes the attack on the left two sky riders are in the mix here well look at this there's also a rider there from the uh, rubber bank well who got that well it was actually alex douse that led out Gering thomas and the uh, lars boom for that yodel sprint point and that just goes to show you we're starting to see the gc contenders get involved for this race and they think that these seconds and these bonuses are very important and there it is confirmed then thomas got five points from last boot down set there with the two and i saw the uh, team mate of of course cavendish of hdc high road getting the one but i must admit the man in the ig markets gold jersey is looking pretty comfortable now is thomas going to try and capitalize on this slender advantage well garrett thomas is looking back at the monk see what damage he's actually done but he's got three seconds in the back towards the gc and these kind of roads they are very heavy indeed and the race is in a very angry mood at the moment and this is where the sort out could really begin to develop there's one more climb to come and that's the second cat at common side all to play for welcome back and there's one more climb then for the riders to negotiate and that's common side and that's the second category ascent and they are now on the foot slopes and again it's team sky pushing hard at the front they know they've still got the six riders in this front group of 27 
There's a chasing group of five just behind. If you've noticed in this group, Vakansley are not represented. They've got two riders trying to come across, and they're within a one minute of this uh, front group. So you've got the front group of 27. There's five that are just off the front of the main peloton as we are now heading up towards the summit of this last climb. Well, you can just see at the back, Swift is starting to struggle. Matt Heyman in front of him is starting to struggle in this climb. It just shows you the effort the Sky put into this uh, chase. Jonathan Tin and Locke. Well, he's full of riding today. Now then, he's trying to get away from the uh, the group again, so he fancies some more points. Now then, if he keeps picking up points like this, he's going to become a serious threat to Russell Hampton, who of course is the current leader in the Skoda King of the Mountains competition. Well, you can just see a reaction from Russell Hampton in the Skoda King of the Mountains jersey, trying to come across and take uh, the second place at the top of this climb. Very steep climb at the top. John T. in the lock comes across the top first. It was almost rubbing it in there, wasn't it? He? he looked back and said, well, can anybody challenge me? But he was over the top first, but second place was Russell Hampton. Well, it just goes to show you how important this is going to take in the mountains jersey means to these domestic teams. And there are the points for you, and that means today, Russell Hampton will have amassed a really big tally. And that means that he will remain in that Skoda King of the Mountains jersey. Well, the King of the Mountains are all out the way, the sprints are out the way. All we need to do is get into Stoke and see who's going to win this stage. So one big sprint remaining, and that, of course, is to claim stage three of the Tour of Britain in Hanley. It's an uphill finish, and, of course, it just twists at the end. The previous three winners have been Greg Henderson of New Zealand last year. Edvald Bosenhagen has won it twice, and we've got an attack here from Sky. Well, Sky have actually disappeared from the front of this leading group. Uh, they've left it all up to HTC High Road. And uh, Alex Dowsett looks as if he's trying to get a bit of a gap. Well, Alex Dowsett has just won the British Time Trial Championship. And if he can get clear, he's a perfect man to set his stall out for a lone victory. Brilliant time trialer. He was second in New Delhi in the Commonwealth Games when he got the silver medal. And Dowsett really is in the form of his life. Well, we expect this should happen. Sky have been riding hard at the front. They rode over Gun Hill, they pushed out the advantage, and this is what we thought they would do, attack for the stage. Now they've got the rest of their team behind, so they've got to look after the interests here now of Dowsett. This is a similar scenario to 12 months ago, when Sky pitched strongly for the stage victory there. They had Thomas Wiggins and Henderson on that occasion, and it was the Kiwi, Henderson, that finally clinched the victory. 10 k's to go. Can he stay away? Well, you would think if anybody had a chance of staying away in the last 10 kilometres with 20 seconds, it would be this man here, the newly crowned British time trial champion. So Dowsett now settling down to the task in hand, fully concentrated, trying to stay ahead then of this chasing group. There he is, he's into the outskirts of the town. Well, he's given it absolute 100% at the moment, and if he pulls off this stage win, he could be taking that gold jersey off Mark Cavendish back. Well, 20 seconds is a scant advantage, but if the group behind do not consistently work, he will profit from it. I think we can just about see them in the distance on that shot. With the pressure from Alex Dowse, it means that all the other teams have to come to the front and start riding them down, because Sky can just sit back, they've got a man in front, and they're looking pretty at the moment for not only the uh, overall jersey, but possible stage. So we'll be looking for efforts from people like Lars Back and Bernard Eisel, who of course are on the HTC uh, High Road squad, looking after the leader, and of course that is Mark Cavendish. 12 seconds, it's coming down. Yeah, it's coming down. This is not an easy finish into the finishing line at Stoke. It's up and down with a climb about one kilometre to go, so it's very, very difficult, and you've got the uphill finish as well. These corrugations on the lead then to the finishing funnel really do sap the strength out of the legs because they've gone over some pretty difficult terrain today. Well, that aerial shot shows that the advantage is coming down all the time. And it's Rabobank and Orange at the front. They're chasing it down. They've got very good riders. It's Bram Tanking leading the way for Rabobank. And they've got Michael Matthews and Lars Boom just sitting nicely in about fifth or sixth place. Only 12 seconds. Well, he's stubbornly hanging on to this advantage. He could do with a few twists and turns because these kind of roads mean that the group can see him. Well, he's still got a good healthy advantage and you've only got one rider from Rabobank trying to chase him down. So it's one against one at the moment. The gap gets slender and slender all the time. Well, you've got to start speculating on the possibility of who could win the sprint. Here we are. This is another attack. This is exactly what happens. Riders try to dive clear off the front and this disrupts the rhythm of the group behind. Well, this is the team from Netap from Germany in the left-hand side. He's just been passed by a Leopard Trek rider. So everybody's trying to chase down 
Alex Dowson. Can he stay away? He's only got a few seconds at the moment. And as I just said, Brian, he could profit from that because when they jump clear and then they sit up, then obviously their pace is not consistent. Well, you've got to remember the terrain we've been over today. These guys are pretty tired. They're on the outskirts of the town at the moment, and the Alex Dowson still got a slender lead, but the attacks have started. When the attack started, there's a lot of stopping and slowing at the front of the chasing group. Well, if that lead does get washed away and they pick him up, then you've got to start looking at the sprinters in the group behind, and Mark Cavendish will be obviously aware of uh, Michael Matthews, who is the world under-23 champion. He's the Australian riding on the Rabobank squad. Well, this is a long straight road into town, and it rears up towards the one kilometre, as we've just said, so Alec Dowson in the front for Team Sky will be seen all the way along this road. It's still a slender 15 seconds at the moment. Still gritting his teeth, everything to play for. It really is a tough approach to the finish, and I think that Dowsett is beginning to buckle a little bit here. His head was dropping, and he realised he really is on the rack. Well, you can look, there's no concerted effort from the group behind, so looking very good at the moment for Alex Dowsett. He just has to keep 100% going. We're inside the final two kilometres, and you can tell that the pressure is full on because the long, thin line has now formed here at the front of the group. Well, it's HTC High Road at the front trying to chase down Alex Dowsett. You can just see them. They're within sight now, about 10 seconds. But uh, this isn't a finish for Mark Cavendish, so it's going to be very difficult for HTC to hold on to this jersey today. It's certainly going to test Mark Cavendish. It's uphill and he kicks as well, just to the line, a sharp turn. Well, he realises now his advantage has almost been uh, wiped away, and that looks like Rabobank to me at the front. And as I speak, he's been overtaken, the Rabobank rider, as they're now going to make the junction. Well, we're close to the top of the hill, we're close to one kilometre to go. We turn left at the top of this climb back in the left hand side you've got Garmin Savelle on the right hand side they're all looking back, it's all together we've got 27 riders trying to win this stage well, who's he going to go to? can Cavendish take stage win number 2? the pace has stalled here and this is an attack on the left hand side of our screen looks like another rider from Sky to me yeah, Sky are really determined to win this stage the rider from Motorpoint is Ian Bibby the local rider, Rafa Condor Sharp have got Dan Craven in there as well and it's all action at the front of this group now, Bibby has just won the Premier Calendar overall, so he's the most consistent rider on the domestic scene. What a turn-up that would be. Bibby could nail this one. He rides for Motor Point Racing, the local team. Well, just look at the front here. We've got uh, Dan Craven for Rafa Condorcet, Steve Cummings for Sky, second place there. Ian Bibby just moves a wee bit further back, but a lot of pushing and barging as we get to the last kilometre. Well, it's still all to play for. I'm just waiting to see whether anybody else is going to try and jump clear with the element of surprise. There it is, the Flamme Rouge, one kilometre to go. And there's a stall here in the pace setting as Sky come through. Mark Cavendish then in that IG Markets Gold jersey is about five back. Now then, can Cavendish get this? Well, Sky take control again. Michael Rogers at the front and they're thinking of... Steve Cummings and Gerang Thomas. Gerang Thomas has been up in the first stage in the sprint, so they'll be thinking of trying to get him to win this stage and possibly take that gold jersey. And of course, he hasn't got Mark Renshaw with him, who's his lead out man. Mark Renshaw hasn't had a good day. He missed the move, but it's Sky again right at the front. For me, the danger men are in the orange, just in front of Mark Cavendish, and that's why he's tracking them at the moment. They're sitting in third and fourth place, and that's Lars Boom and Michael Matthews. But Cav is right on them at the moment. He knows these are the guys to track in this uphill finish. And it's Sky at the front here, and it looks like the Australian Heyman. Heyman swings over to set it up for Cummings and Geron Thomas. But keep your eye on the brace of riders from Rabobank, Lars Boom and Michael Matthews. Matthews, who's the world under 23 champion, he's second at the moment. Boom is much taller, and it's going to be Lars Boom. He kicks here at the corner, and Boom is round that first. Here he comes to the line. Lars Boom takes it on the line. Matthews is second, and it looked like Sky finishing third, and I'm assuming that's going to be Geron Thomas. Thomas. What a finish then by Boom. Oh, absolutely fantastic. The two Rabobank riders, first and second here. As you see from the aerial shot, they've got about three or four bike lengths into the corner left, sweeping right hand corner. What power they guys have got. One, two on the day. Well, there we are. The victory salute from Boom and from Matthews, his teammate. And it looked like Geron Thomas to me for third. Well, there's Mark Gavindis. Question you've got to ask yourself has he done enough to hang on to the race leader's jersey? A powerful 1-2 then from Rabobank on Stokes' uphill finish. Lars Boom, the big man with the staying power when it mattered. He takes the stage from teammate Michael Matthews, Sky's Geraint Thomas and Steve Cummings in third and fourth, 
with race leader Mark Cavendish in fifth 